The book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 1. Bless you who are, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. Bless you who are, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives all of your iniquities? Who heals all of your diseases? Who heals all of your diseases? One more time. Who heals all of your diseases? Who is that? Yahuwah. Who redeems your life from destruction? And we'll do it again. Who redeems your life from destruction? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who does that? Oh, Yahuwah. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. It's just another way of saying blessings. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Verse 5 again. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Yahuwah Shalom. <laughs> Yashorel. It's Elder DFG. Hey, my brothers and sisters. You know, I thought I would start off with the book of Psalms 103 because it kind of ties into our Tanakh uh, study lesson this past Wednesday night where we had a chance uh, to talk about um, a woman by the name of Sarah who had lost several husbands uh, due to forces beyond her control. And then later on, you know, another young man by the name of Tobit and his journey uh, in regards to, you know, allowing himself to be influenced, you know, as Exodus 20 and 12 says, honoring your mother and your father. And how that his father, Tobit Sr., instructed his son, an adult, in the ways for which he should go so that he might prosper. And inside of that, and, and you can find this lesson in Tobit chapter 4, if you like. Okay, we studied it out already, so we're not going to go back over it again. But you will find that it's a very important lesson there with many, many, um, what I would say, um, fruit of good things, good lessons, life learnings, learning nuggets. That's the word I was looking for, brothers and sisters. Some excellent nuggets there and precepts to go along with it as well. Um, as I would have shared with you if I already have your email address. Not that I'm soliciting your email address. Your email address is just another way for me to keep you current if you're part of our Tanakh studies or if you have questions off of, based off, if you have any questions regarding to any messages uh, that you've heard, you know, on, you know, this platform. So, you know, if you're subscribed to this channel and, and you're a consistent contributor, then, you know, that email is there, you know, to, to assist me, to assist, assist you in the questions that you might have, okay? But I thought Psalms 103, let me get back to this, 103 would be a good way to segue into where I wanted to go today, and that is the season and the times that we're in, brothers and sisters. You know, I had a dream the other night, and I'm going to be quick about this. And in this dream, uh, it appeared that I owned a trucking company, a flatbed truck, I mean a trailer, 90-foot trailer uh, company. And I was overseeing one of my trailers being uh, loaded up. And it was being loaded up with, with, with cases of meat. And it was interesting because it was an open flatbed. Now, if you know anything about, you know, meat, you have to have that in a certain temperature uh, for spoilage purposes and things of that nature to make sure it, so that it does not spoil. But anyway, in this case, in the dream, it wasn't the case. And the truck was filled from bottom to the top, almost bottom to the top, and I'll tell you why almost bottom. But the trailer was 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 packed from from flat to top and from front to back, 90 feet long. And it was shrink wrapped or wrapped up plastic wrapped. 
the wrap to keep the product, you know, to keep all the, you know, the, the meat product together, all those cases together. And I remember as I was standing looking over at uh, the men who were loading the truck and thinking to myself, you know, I hope that's going to be secure. But also in the dream, there was a little a little space between the base of where the freight was to the flat bed of the truck. And inside that little area was a sleeping area. And the loaders, you know, once they finished loading it, they were all to go down there in that little open area. And that's where they rested as the load was going to be delivered where it was going. And I remember thinking as the truck was pulling off and it was, I have two brothers, blood brothers. I have three really, but two of them, um, one was the driver. He began to drive the truck. And I remember saying, you know, I won't say his name, it's not necessary. But I was thinking to myself, I hope he's very, very careful because I don't want anything to happen because I don't want, you know, a bad accident to happen because the, the meat product on the top of the truck, you know, if something happened, it's going to fall down and that's, that's thousands and thousands of tons and it's going to, it, it will crush the people, you know, who are resting under there. I know it doesn't make sense. It's a dream. And so it's not supposed to make natural sense, but I'm sure there's spiritual meaning to it. And I remember after they were driving away and I'm looking from a position where I'm almost looking out of the window, an office window, possibly watching the truck pull off and thinking those thoughts like, I hope nothing happens. I hope nothing happens. And not long after that, I, I'm, you know, the truck leaves and then I, then the truck revisualizes to me again. But this time, it's not at its destination, but it's like at a, at a truck stop. And another brother now is, is in the truck. And he's backing the truck up on this little ramp. And as he's backing the truck up, you know, the, the load starts to shift. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, man, I hope that load doesn't fall over this time. And surely as he went up the little incline, the load tilted over. And all of the meats, and there were many types of, of, of meat products, you know, just, just fell over out into the, into, you know, onto the side of, of, the, of the, in the open space, you know, where the truck was pulling into. And I remember thinking to myself, my goodness, they're never going to be able to get all that stuff uh, up, loaded back onto that truck. I knew I should have found a better way, you know, to secure it, or they should have secured it better. And I remember thinking to myself, man, we're going to lose all of this product. Because there's no way they're going to get all that product when it tilted over. Lift it case by case by case. And it was a variety of meats. Big cases, 90 pounds of beef and whatever other meat products. Some were bigger than other cases. So it was a variety. Because I knew that by the time they got that meat back up on that truck, which was next to impossible, the time would have expired on it as well. In other words, it would not have been, you know, good for food anymore. And then I awakened. And I know that's, yeah, there's a message in there. You know, I, I was talking to uh, someone on yesterday inside the conversation and they were saying, uh, my brother, my father, <laughs> elder, you know, they, they, that's probably people. And that's probably y'all telling you, you know, time is running out. It probably, you were hoping and hoping that there was more time, that it was secure enough only to realize that, you know, you had done your part, but your part wasn't enough Others should have done their part too. So I just wanted to share that, you know, with my brothers and sisters. I, I believe that again, it's, it's just a warning to us. It's, 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 you know, it's just confirmation, you know, affirmation of everything that we've been seeing. You know, you know, we were told between three to five years. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And now we're at year number four. And we were told between three or five years, we start to see, you know, the impact. We, we would see the impact where 70%, you know, all over this earth had participated in that program and that we'd see the impact of why they were pushing that program. And so I, today's message is to remind my brothers and sisters of the time that we're in. And this is not the time to be, you know, distracted. This is not the time to be double minded. You know, if you're in idolatry or practicing any kind of idolatry, known or unknown, you know, you, you're, you're in harm's way. Serious harm's way. Serious, serious. 
and this channel, this 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 ability, this you know, direction was given to me. That's why I named the channel what I named it. In the day's messenger was to be a voice, you know, crying aloud, constantly talking to my brothers and sisters and saying, hey, look, you know, we were pulled into lies. We were pulled into deception of religion, divination, conspiracy, conspirers got together, all of all the other nations, to weaken us through their religions, through their religious beliefs, through their saviors. That's why you heard me emphasize here, Yahuwah is our redeemer. Yahuwah is our savior. It is Yahuwah who will what? Heal all diseases. And you can read that. We'll visit that in a few minutes, but I want to reemphasize that to my brothers and sisters. And for those who participated in the program, because again, you know, I realized, and we've said it before on this channel, that, you know, there was a, it, it took a lot to be able to, 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 to not to do that. And all kind of, you know, people were being threatened. You know, uh, with, with loss of employment, uh, some were being threatened with loss of benefits, uh, things that they need, you know, for, for, for survival. I was talking to one of my, well, I, I was in communication, not verbal communication, uh, but one of my sisters, one of our sisters shared with me that how they were placing a lot of pressure in her direction, saying that, well, it will help you with government programs if you participate in that program. And again, you know, I'm not going to say what it is because if I say what it is, then you guys won't be hearing from me for at least a week. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I don't know why. But that's why we have the Bible studies and that's why we have Zoom uh, hangouts because then we talk about those things uh, on those two uh, platforms. The Wednesday night studies and then Friday night Zoom calls. Then we can open and we have we have honest dialogue. I'm not going to have a Patreon or and use that clever stuff to work. If you want to hear more about it, you know. If you want to hear about it, be on the Wednesday night Bible studies. Or, and if you're an Israelite, be with us on the Zoom calls on Friday night. And you can ask those questions. And we will discuss them openly. But that to be said, you know, they're, they're trying to incentivize our people even now, you know, in order to be able to get, you know, their benefits. You follow me? And I use quotation benefits because how is it beneficial? You know, when we already know that there are men who are unalive today who said that anybody who participated in those programs, you know, had three to five. Almost like a prison sentence. But they weren't talking about prison. But Yah says he can heal anything, all diseases. But inside of that, if you look at Psalms 103, he told us exactly how those diseases could be healed. They were healed if we recognize who our blessings come from the sovereign one his holy name and that's why when those who say well nobody knows his name we don't say their names i will say it again you know we be not bastards <laughs> as, as 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 moses told the people in deuteronomy 23 2 we know who our father is so if you don't know your father's name that's on you but we know our father is yahuwah okay for those of us who know no our father is Yahuwah. And we don't have to debate that with anyone. You can call him here Jackrabbit Flash if you want to. But over here, it's Yahuwah. And we're good with that. And he has shown himself strong and has blessed us in many ways. He says what? He'll renew you like the eagles. Well, he's been renewing me like the eagle. And I've been saying Yahuwah for a minute. And other than a brief little, you know, cold here and there, you know, and, and the taking of this, as you see now, it's empty. It has fallen down to this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then that, see right here, that message of verse 5? It's showing in my life. You know what I'm saying? Look at this, brothers and sisters. Not, and this is not the boast or brag, but your brothers, in two months, I'm going to be officially at retirement age. <laughs> and I could... <laughs> You can see, I think you can see, there's not obesity, nothing like that, not disrespecting anybody for size, but I'm telling you, God's word is true. That's what I'm saying. And if it applies to me, it can apply to you. And there where it says, who satisfies your mouth with good things, in other words, I can speak a testimony, I can boast about Yahuwah, not boast about uh, Elder DFG, Brother DFG, I'm boasting about Yahuwah. They want to talk about their lamb who died for their sins. And most of those 
who served that lamb spend time between two places, the church and the hospital, because that's what sick people are. I'll say it again. Most of those who boast about that lamb, by the time they get anywhere near my age, they're going to spend most of their time, if we have that much time left for them, they're spending, even those today are spending their time between the church, where sick folk are, looking for that lamb to do what he never has done, in the hospital, hoping that a human being can do what the lamb can't do. And then when the human, when the, when, when the church can't tell them how to do it, they ain't tell them to go over there to, the, to, the, to, 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 to their specialist over in the hospital and to hope that they do it. And then, and then they tell them, well, you know, that's what they're here for. I'm talking about the ones in the church send you to the hospital. And then when the ones in the hospital, right, they can't do nothing for you, they send you back to the church. Like they're playing a game of racquetball with you. Bam, 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 right upside the head. But here's another alternative. Test tried and proven with evidence, and I'm not the only one. If you're with us on our Zoom calls on Friday nights, you'll see some Israelite sisters that are in my age group, and I'm telling you, for, for except they would tell you their age, no way you would believe it, and they all serve you who and that, so that, see right here, where he's, what David testifies, he says that, you know, who will satisfy your mouth? We're going to boast about Yahuwah and his blessings so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. So they're going to stay healthy because they're on the right side of it. We came out of the church so we don't have to end up in the hospital if we'll ultimately have you inside of the cemetery or the grave awaiting judgment, which is not going to be pretty. But just to stop right here, or stop right there with that, that's not, a, not a lot of information. People will accuse you know, me of fear-monging. They'll accuse me of exaggerating or kill me of exceptionalism, one-off-ism, an anomaly. Or whether that just happened to be you, you got great DNA. Well, if you knew my family background, you would know that you don't know what you're talking about if that's what you think. That's not a person and my mother had eight kids. That's not one of us other than myself that does not have high blood pressure. Some with heart disease and other illness. So this has nothing to do with that. But I will say this and I'll say it straight face. I'm the only one who diligently spends time in this book, worshiping Yahuwah, bringing forth Yahuwah's message as I am called to do as an elder and watchman in Yahshua. And now I'm seeing the benefits. Hallelujah. He said, forgetting out all of his benefits, I'm not going to forget them. My soul will never forget Yahuwah's benefits. And there are others like myself. And if it's not you, then you have a basic question to ask. Why not? And secondly, have you, if you made the decision, like I said earlier, you know, to, to be to, 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 to participate in that program for whatever reason was, you're not stuck there. And I've never told anybody they're stuck there. If you do nothing about it, if you're going to count on sweet Jesus to help you, I'm telling you, it ain't going to happen because they use sweet Jesus to get many of our people to participate with it in the first place or to participate in it. So how is... You know, that's what Jesus would want you to do because that's what a lot of these pastors were telling their congregants, the senators, governors, council people, whomever, had a little sugar on the top for them. That's what they were telling them to do. They, those entities were the ones who pulled many of our people into that. So how is dang into that going to fix the problem when many of our people got into the problem for, for listening to that in the first place? That's a double negative. If you're looking for something new or you're looking for something different, you have to be willing to grow or change. Otherwise, you keep repeating the same old madness. What they say, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over, but hoping for a different result. And it's not going to happen. Again, we studied that in, in, the, in the study on this past one about being directed. Directed simply means brothers and sisters being focused. Don't get caught up too many of our people in too many different things. If you want to see Yah's blessing, be with wise counsel who are blessed of Yah and be directed. Stay focused. Stay within your group. Stay within your kind as the book, again, told before, you know, reminds us to do. 
This if you want to be blessed, if you want to be healed, if you want to be protected, if you want to prosper. There's nothing complicated about it. You know, that, uh, what is that? Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 11 and 6. Where in the morning, plant your coin. Or in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, let not your hand be idle. In other words, don't be wasting your time. Because, because you won't know which one of those two things your whore would bless. Or he just might bless both. Ecclesiastes 11 and 6. You know, it's there. But the common denominator is being directed and directed to who? Yahuwah. And not scattered in many places. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in too many places. I've been looking for love. And now I'm loveless. As the song goes. But let's build a little bit on, 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 on Psalms 103. I want to take you over to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30. And again, let me say again to my brothers and sisters, those of you who are dealing with health issues. It doesn't matter whether it came through the mandate or not. Or maybe you've been the mandate and you healthy as a law. Okay, then. Then you're the exception. But regardless... There's a way to stay renewed. There's a way to stay strong. There's a way to stay healthy in these last days. And your brother is here to help. To remind you. To hopefully be a light for you. To encourage you. To stay in the right path. Stay in the right light. To come out of darkness. To, to, to have the curses removed from you, from your family, at least your immediate family. We're not just here talking about the problems. We're here to talk about solutions. How do we fix the problems? Yeah, I will call out the problems. I will call out, you know, the things that Israel is challenged with, the judgment against our people for our rebellion against Yahuwah. And you can believe this, or not. This is all about our serving someone other than the sovereign Yahuwah. And refusing to let him guide us by letting the heathens in their New Testament, Korans or Korans, whatever the hell they over there teaching, sorcerers books that many have in your homes that you should have ridden yourself of already because the commandments tell you not to have them in your homes. They say you should not have anything that would be spiritually related, like a man or anything in the heaven, anything in the water, you know what I'm saying? Anything, you know, under the water, anything in the earth, above the earth, skies, everything. It tells you none of those. It, it, it's all inclusive. So you should have nothing, you know, to influence your relationship with Yah outside of his Torah, his Tanakh, with his presence. Because that's what it's going to bring to you. But the heathens and their sorcerers, their wizards, their writers, their poets, their, their, their spiritual leaders wrote all these books with all these solutions, with all this history, all of it to compete against Yah's Torah, including the New Testament. The New Testament was written to compete against Yah's word. It's a kind of narrative. And again, if it was working for us, brothers, think of sisters, we'd be the most blessed people walking this earth. And I'm not talking about when you die and go to hell. Because that's what I'm talking about right here while you're alive. And I will prove that out to you in a moment. At least I'll read it out to you if you stick around for a moment to the end. Be worth your moment. But let's look at Jeremiah chapter 30. Look what it says, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 1. The word of the word came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah saying, Thus speak Yahuwah. Now, how do we get to hear Yahuwah's word? Let me, I'm going to simplify here, brothers and sisters. Because see, when we say the word of you, these are all these people running around these nutcases talking about, I know I'm a nerd. <laughs> yeah, with something. Probably Crisco all or something. You ain't really it with the all of Yahuwah. 
Too bad for that. Too scatterbrained for that. If you were blessed of Yahuwah, you know, you would know your role and you would you'd be happy to fulfill your role and you would be directed. You wouldn't spend your time out here challenging, you know, the leadership. You would be figuring out how can I get in where I can fit in so I can make a difference. That's what your mindset would be. But there's some other voice out there talking to them. And it is well on their grandma's grave is it's, it's Jesus. It is. But if you knew who Jesus was, then you'd understand you probably shouldn't be listening to Jesus or Yahushua, Yahawashia, Ra, Nah, whatever name he had thousands of years ago that's still being spoken as curses today upon Israel, our people. Just so you know, when the book told us clearly, learn not the ways of the heathens around you. Learn none of their ways, including their traditions, including their ceremonies, including their customs. And what do you have Israelites doing? Fighting us who are serving, serving Yahuwah, telling us, oh no, you need to believe like we believe because we believe the same one the heathens. We believe in the New Testament. But you don't believe in the New Testament. No, the heathens believe in the New Testament and I'm not a heathen. Used to be, not anymore. Or the two-third heathen. But now I'm a one tent, clean, purified, waiting on Yah to come, elder watchman. That's my evolution. What's yours? But let's go on here. Chapter verse, chapter thirty, verse two. Thus speaks Yahuwah of Yashrael, of Yashrael, saying, "Right." You, all the words that I have spoken unto you in a book or in a cipher, you know, <laughs> cipher. He said, write it down in the cipher. For lo, the days come, say Yahuwah, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Yashorel and Judah. Israel and Judah, says Yahuwah. He said, a day will come where he will what? Bring the, he will end, is what he's saying, the captivity of his people, of us. That's why we said, we tell, remind our brothers and sisters that a lot of these feast days are polluted. Their intentions are good, but the world is full of people who are making bad decisions with good intentions. Don't be one of them. That's the best I can tell you because that's what Yahuwah is telling us. Anything other men touch cannot be offered to Yah as a sacrifice. It's polluted including your own hands. And if you're studying this word, you know I'm right. If you're not studying it, then I guess you go on with the camps or the communities or whoever you're listening to. Yourself too, possible. Came to your own conclusion on it. Hmm. I'm just trying to help. Verse 3, for Lord, the days come, said Yahuwah, I will bring again the captivity of my people, Yahshuaol and Judah, says Yahuwah, and I will cause them to return to the land which I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, we talked about that in, 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 in the book of, of the, the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12. He says the same thing. When we bring us back to our land, then we're going to be able to do those things. Uh, Ezekiel talks about it in Ezekiel chapter 20. He said, when we get back to our land, Yahshuaol, the land of milk and honey, the renewed Yasharel, then we'll be able to do those things. Not until. I'm talking, we can do them, but they're unclean, and all you're doing is bringing, you know, damnation on yourself if you're doing it. All you're doing is polluting yourself. And you're getting nothing out of that, but, you know, spending some money to the, giving to the heathens and just going through the motions, spinning your wheels, moving fast, but going nowhere. So just understand, if you're participating in that, then I'm just saying it's just counterproductive. Y'all's not seeing that. He's not recognizing that. And for you, you should be happy that he isn't. Think of Uzzah. Remember Uzzah? Book of Chronicles? Called himself protecting the Ark of Covenant from hitting the ground. And was this, his life, he lost his life. Thinking he was doing right, but he was doing wrong because he was trying to use his polluted hands to touch something sacred of Yah. And if he's not a respectable, per respectable person, a lot of our brothers ought to be, you ought to be grateful of Yah's mercy because he could have taken you out by now for doing those, 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 those customs. And that's why, you know, you see those camps 
in those communities who are doing. Look how wretched and wicked how Yah is starting to judge them. Look how he's exposing them. Everybody, the talk of the town, everybody knows what's going on with them now. He's shaming them publicly. Y'all don't need me to give you all their names, you, but they're there. They're all over the internet, falling apart. Women out of order, men out of order. Just a show, just a so saying shit show. And getting worse fast. So if we don't need that, you don't need that. What we need is Yah's word, brothers and sisters. Okay, we need what well, Yah's asking us just to obey, keep my law, statutes, and commandments. And I'm going to back that up in just a minute. But let me get on here so I can get us through this message. Praise Yahuwah. Not that I'm in a hurry. I just want to, you know, stay the course. I know your time could be limited. And I want to be respectful of it. Let's go on. He said, look at verse 4. And these, and these are the words that Yahuwah spoke concerning Yahshua and concerning Judah. That's all of Yahshua. That's all of us. This applies to each and every one of us, my brothers and sisters, if you're Israel. But thus says Yahuwah, we have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace. Ask you now and see whether a man travails with his child if a man and the children are crying, suffering, in pain, miserable, vexation. And I think we all would have to agree. Oh, yeah. It's a poop show everywhere. And even those who will say, not my life, they, that's just because they want to be bragging and be boastful because they, you know, they just don't want to deal with, you know, reality. So they, they conjure up this, this imagined life, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell. Everything's good. You know, people you call, oh, everything's great. Everything's great. And if you were to follow him around for 24 hours, you wouldn't follow him around. For you, you, you'd be happy that you're going at that 25th hour. You realize, yeah, right. Great. Really? This is great? <laughs> you're at home crying, man. But nobody can see. Downing in your own tears. But boasting publicly instead of just being humble and saying, no, I'm struggling. I'm in this fight. Tell me what I need to do to get it right. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm going to do. For you too. And for the rest of us, we already know this is the way to go. But thus says you who we have heard of we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear, and not of peace. Verse 6. Ask you now. So we go before Yah, Yah. We know we dialogue. When we're in Yah's Torah, we're being obedient, then we can inquire of Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. This is why he rejected elders in, in Ezekiel. He said, what are you guys doing up here talking to me and you haven't judged anybody? People out there doing everything under the sun and you have the audacity to become asking me questions? He said, I'm not answering none of your questions. He says, do I look like a pimp? Do I look like I have a stable? Do I like I, I cater to whores? Because he did call them whores. Because they were serving all these other gods and doing whatever they want to do, whatever they imagine to do, and whatever people imagine to do, they were allowing it and being, you know, uh, permitting of it, distancing themselves away from it, thinking that by distancing themselves away from it, then they're not guilty of it. No, brothers and sisters, we can't distance ourselves away from anything that Yah says we are accountable to. And we're accountable to not only obeying these laws, statutes, and commandments ourselves, but also confronting our brothers and sisters when they're not doing that. We can't make them do it, but we absolutely are accountable for warning them about what they do. And you can go find that in the book of Ezekiel chapter uh, 3, verse 17. And he goes on to say here, brothers and sisters, verse 7, verse 6. Ask now whether a man is crying with his child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his hips, or on his legs, loins, thighs, not on hips. Women, men, we don't walk around your brother, get your hands off your hips. As a woman in travail. And all the faces are turned into paleness, emptiness. Alas, wake up, for the day is great, so that none is like it. Even, and even is it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. That's Israel's trouble. 
And I'll say this, brothers and sisters, anybody walking around talking about they don't have no problems and they don't have no trouble, something wrong with them. The book said we're in the time of Israel's trouble. Now, if they're not Israel, the heathen, if they're not going to say that, they're heathen living it up. They're living their best life now. That Rick Warren told, told them, live your best life now. A uh, perfect driven life. I think that's Joe Osteen with the live your best life now. George Myers, one of them heathens. Now, all people over there just reading that stuff up. But it makes me feel good. But it's not renewing you like an eagle. Quite frankly, you know, it makes you feel like, man, you know, the eagle is lifted and I got left behind. Show not prophecy of Isaiah 40 and 30. They shall mount wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Uh-uh. Them books that have nothing to do. Them books are simply there to fleece the flock. To enrich them at, at, the, at the cost of tickling your feet or tickling your belly or tickling under your arms, you know, to get you, give you a quick little feel good, a little boost of adrenaline, and then you're right back in vexation as soon as you put it down. Because there's no life in that. This life is in the Torah. Life is in the Tanakh. This is a living book. Again, this book applies to every situation and every person in that situation they're in, regardless of their situations. There's no greater remedy for Yashrael than Yash, Torah, and Tanakh. None whatsoever. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. Let's go. Let's continue on here. He says, the great day has come. There's none like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Hallelujah. So all of us are not going to go down, brothers and sisters. Some of us are actually, you know, be with Yahuwah, are going to get the promise that Isaiah 66 talks about. Isaiah 64 four says, what I have not seen, ears not heard, those things that are entered in the heart, are those things that the men have imagined in his heart that Yah has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. These are precepts. Amen. saw. Isaiah 64 and 4 tells us that. Blessed of Abba Yah, make a man rich, add no sorrow with that. I think that's Proverbs 10 and 22. There and about. You can find it. But Yah is good to Yasharel, those who keep and obey his law, statutes, and commandments, who come out of idolatry and sorcery, and they go through and they cleanse around them and keep the commandments. The commandments say we cannot have any of those things around us. Can we drift over there and come right back here? Look at this, brother. Let's go over to the commandments. You know, all these people don't. Well, I keep the commandments. I don't obey the laws. There's 636 laws and nobody can keep them all. In captivity, we can't keep them all, but we can't keep some. And the ones that we can't keep, we're accountable to keep. But look what it says. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And Yahuwah, or Elohim, spoke all these words saying, I am Yahuwah, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt. So there's no question about it. Ain't no Jesus, or no how, how, what's it called? I can never say that name. I just want to call it alphabet soup name or how or whatever. You know, he said, no, Yahuwah brought us out of Egypt. He said, I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And if he did it once, he could do it again. If he didn't need no help then to bring us out, why we needed Jesus to bring us out now? Or Yahushua, or Hawashah. If he doesn't change, then tell me why he changed. Yet the book says he does not change. And if he did it over there, he did it. Before. And it's funny how that our people are talking about the second exodus, right? Because, you know, but they don't, but they talk in the second exodus, but they leave Yahuwah out of it, saying that Yahushua is the one who's going to get them out of the second exodus. By believing on Yahushua, they're going to be saved and redeemed, and their bond, bondage is going to be broken. So, wait a minute. You wrote, we read that in the New Testament. And now you're conflating. They're conflating the two things. And hoping that you don't catch the lie. Because Yah says he does not change. And Yah says he's sovereign means one. He's so sovereign. Check this out, brothers and sisters. Look at, look at still in Exodus. Chapter 3. Verse 3, I'm sorry. 20, chapter 20, verse 3. You shall have no other him, Elohim before me. None. And that's a little e. That includes their little, you know, Messiah. Their lamb. Who they always want to try to push you to. 
who ain't do, that lamb ain't doing nothing for him. It's just a construct in their mind. In their mind, they think he's doing something for them. But when you look around, there's no fruit to back that up. Just a bunch of hype. They've been hyped up, and then they're trying to keep us hyped up. And many of us were hyped up or under the spell. Not anymore. But many of us were there. Some of you are still there, playing both sides to the fence. Be careful with that. Because y'all judge the man for doing that. So you either all the way in or you all the way out. But look what it says here. You should have no other. So that's the end of any other. Why should we have any other redeemer or savior in our mind when y'all said have no other? Other than Yahu. You shall not make unto you any graven images. This is part. Any likeness of anything that is in the heaven or above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Now, this includes books, everything, brothers and sisters, ornaments, crystals, it's every, anything that has anything to do with uh, Elohim, man, anything that man has written to, to, to challenge Elohim. You understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? To compete against Elohim, because most of those help books, that's exactly what they do. They lead you to their Messiah. To the heathen God that they believe, that they know, that they love. Or taught, and was taught, loved them, but he ain't never showed no love to them. He threw their behinds right in the prison yard. What did Ephesians say? Slaves, obey your masters. Obey those who have charge, or charge over you. Women, shut up and be quiet and don't talk unless your husband give you permission. You ain't fit to speak in the assembly. That's what they said. Sorcerous lies to subjugate our people. And so I'm going to call it out so you can come out and stay out when you get out. If you want these blessings we're talking about over here in Jeremiah 30. Look what he says. You should not make any, any, they should not be writing anything. Make means to create in any form or fashion, brothers and sisters. Make is make. You write a book that's making something. You cut something, a piece of wood, that's making something. You make it out of glass or crystal, that's all making something. That's for all of those who want to, you know, not understand what he's saying here. So I hope I clarified. Was it made or created by a man? Is it spiritual? Does it have something to do with your soul? Your walk before your whore? Does it have to do anything about a, a, a redeemer or, or someone else, a savior? then that's what he's referencing here. And that's why you need to get it out of your home, out of your presence, out of your car, out of your office at work or wherever it might be. Out of your pants pocket, your wallet, your purse. If you want the blessings, if you want the, the, the healings, if you want the promises, if you want to be renewed like the eagle, that's how it happens. Okay? All right, in verse 5, you should not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. I mean, you should not be giving them any attention at all. Why you need it if you're not going to give attention to it? Why is it on your bookshelf if you're never going to read it again? Read it. Get rid of it. He said we shouldn't have it. He said you should not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them, for I am Yahuwah, and I am jealous. A lot of people forget this jealous part. He said, nobody before him, no son before him, no nothing before him. No apostle before him, no disciple before him, no pastor, no, no, no evangelist, no one before him. No iman, no rabbi, no one before him. None means none. Because I'm jealous and I will visit your I will judge you for that's what he said, visit iniquity upon the father. But he's saying that I'm gonna judge you for it. And he said, and this will go down for many generations. And every generation does it, just spreads it farther and farther and farther. Now I hope that helps. For those of you who just refuse to get rid of those trinkets, and you don't have to, but understand you're going against Yah, and if you're going against Yah, 
What he said, those iniquities, those that, that evil, those things that are happening around you that every time you take one step forward, you're getting two steps or 20 or 100 steps backwards. Okay. Who's to say that doesn't have something to do with that? If you trust the word, the word says it has everything to do with it. Or a lot to do with it. Maybe not everything, but a lot. Enough for you to rid yourself of it. Do you love him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength? Then what would you not do for something you love with all your heart, mind, and strength? They're saying, what will you won't do for love? You tried everything. But you won't give up. Won't give up what? Idolatry? It's time. If you want these blessings, it's time. He goes on, Alas, the day is so great, none like him. Back, back at uh, Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, the day is so great, and none is like it. I've read that already. Let's drop down here to verse 8. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahuwah, that I will break the yoke off our necks, and I will break the chains, and the strangers shall no more serve themselves of us. In other words, the strangers will no longer be above us. The heathens is what he's talking about. Friendly ones, no unfriendly ones. So I'll, he said, they're going to come, I'm going to break that yoke. But I'm going to break it through your obedience. But it's going to come after much trouble. He's talking redemption here, brothers and sisters, now. That particular statement was a redemption statement. But they serve Yahuwah and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. And they will serve Yahuwah and David their king. So all of the four, what about Enoch 46? Enoch 46 is talking about King David, not Jesus. I've said it to you time and time again. That's what it's talking about. That's your answer. Because that's exactly who it's talking about. Therefore, fear not, O my servant Jacob, says Yahuwah, neither be dismayed, O, Yish o Yashorel, for lo, I will save you from afar, and your seed from the land of their captivity. He's talking about our children, brothers and sisters. I'm talking about those of us who are keeping Yah's law, statutes, and commandments, and those who will raise their children, and the children are still doing it. Not those that Exodus 5 says that, you know, they're in idolatry. He said, no, their, their children are going to be damned. But those who are serving the one sovereign Yah, because he is a jealous Elohim, you, you saw me read that, heard me read that, and it's written in your Torah. He says, if you're doing that, this applies to you. Your seed, your children will be blessed. He says, and I will save you from afar, and your seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Hallelujah. For I am with you, says Yahuwah, to save you. Yahuwah is our Savior. Yahuwah is our Redeemer. That's Isaiah 43 from 1 through 4 and Isaiah 43 from uh, 9 through 14. Isaiah 43. But Isaiah 45 and 7 talks. It's all through the book, brothers and sisters. But they want to tell you some lamb going to do it. That's craziness. Some lamb. Think about that. The ridiculousness of it. Well, it's, it's symbolic. It's spiritual. That's the object of spiritual. It's demonic. It's demon. It's possession. It's wizardry, sorcery, divination, neuromancing, talking to the dead, praying to the dead, quoting the dead as though they are alive. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Who said that? Paul. Where's Paul? Dead. Why are you quoting? Dead man Paul. Verse 11. For I am with you, says Yahuwah, to save you, though I make an end of all the nations where I have scattered you. Yet I will not make a full end of you, but I will correct you in measure, and I will leave you all to, I will not leave you altogether unpunished. That's why he's talking about the nine, ten, or two thirds of Yashorel. He's going to punish Many of our people are going to get punished because they don't want to come out of the nations. They don't want to come out of, I'm talking about, I say come out of the nation. They want to continue to participate in all of the ceremonies and all of, of, of the traditions and the customs that these heathen nations participate in. 
And Yah said, he's going to destroy all of them. And he's going to destroy many of us who are with them because we won't come out. We love their gods. We love their customs. We love their tradition. Or we think we could play both ends to the middle. We could do a little Hebrew Israelite, but we can also, you know, be a little, you know, uh, Paulinian epistle driven. Playing both sides of the fence. Two time in Yah. Like he don't see you. That's why he calls you a whore and an adulterer, those who do it. And those of us who were doing it ignorantly, we were in that same category. But that's where his mercy came. He said, that's why he said, what did he say here? He said, little by little, I'm going to help some of them. Let me read that to you again, in case you missed it, my brothers and sisters. All right? Look at this. He says, verse 11, Jeremiah 30 and 11. For I am with you, says Yahuwah, to save you. And I will make a full end of all the nations. So y'all destroying all them na the nations. So if you're part of those nations, your day is coming. You can say whatever you want to say. You better have your fun right now. Live your best life right now. Just like Joe Osteen told you to do. A purpose-driven life. Just like Rick Warren told you. You better feel, you better fulfill your cup. You better fulfill your cesspool. Because all that filth you've been pushing, now you're going to drown in your own manure. Praise Yah for that. From the wicked come wickedness. Goodness gracious. For he said, look, for I am with you, says Yahuwah, to save you. Do I make a full end of all the nations where I have scattered you? Because we are scattered. Yet I will not make a full end of you. Hallelujah. So he said he's going to save some of us. But I will correct you in measure. See what I'm saying? He's saying little by little, he gonna, he's going to correct us. And that's what he's doing to all of us. He got us out of that stuff. Little by little. A lot of you brothers and sisters, right now you're doing little things. You're saying, yeah, I'm changing now. I'm coming out of these things. I thought that was the right way, only to find out I was wrong. Praise Yahuwah. So he's saying little by little, he was correcting us. He's correcting any of us who want to come out. But most of our people don't want to come out. You'd have to, you know, drag them by the crown of their head to get them out of there. And they would just get up and go run right back. But that don't mean we don't tell them. That don't mean we don't want them, though. But like the, like the proverb says, the dog will go back to his own vomit and the pig will go back to his own. But the pig will go back to the mud because it's comfortable and filth. It enjoys being filthy. And that's a lot of Israel. They enjoy filth and wickedness. They just do. Just tell the truth. They lap it up like a lap dog. But praise Yah, not all of us. But he said, I will not leave you altogether unpunished. So Yah said, we're going to suffer to some degree. But he'll be with us. But thus says Yahuwah, verse 12, your bruise is incurable. And your wound, your wound, your wound is grievous. But there is none to plead your cause. None. So why are we over there in these churches and religion? And he said, there is none to plead your cause. So why are you there? He's saying that Yahweh Shah can't do it. So why are they there? He goes on to say thus, brothers and sisters. He said, there, he said there's none to plead your cause that, that you may be bound up. That's why I say, you know, they're in the hospital church, church hospital. And then the cemetery. After they chopped off a limb or two. Or whatever else they're doing to him. Body parts. And he said, you have no healing medicines. Now, I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> expand on that because that's going to open up a, the door for the heathens to come over here. Accusing me of something. But he said, you will have no healing medicines. Now, you think about that. One of my dear sisters was, again, saying they were trying to entice her with, you know, with that, that kind of stuff. And she said, hell no, you keep it. I got ya. Oh, she said, by the way, I got my brother DFG, my elder DFG standing uh, side by side with me. And sister, you are 100% right. You know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm talking about you. If you can't confuse, I'm talking about sister SB. That's your initial. That's who I'm talking about. Yeah, I am with you 100%. And you are absolutely right in my personal belief. And I believe I have the mind of Yah on that particular matter. In other words, I'm telling you what the book said. That's what I mean, the mind of Yah. That's what the messengers in every called, you know, messenger of Yah would only share with you what Yah says. 
So you're 100% right. And I am with you. And I know I'm not the only one with you. There are others who are standing too. They don't know your business, but you know. There's going to be a community around you. You just hold you just hold it down. Like you said, you said, I'm already holding it down. You said, D, but D, D, I need to tell you, but I just want to tell you that. And I'm like, praise y'all. Thank you for the testimony. I just want to let you know publicly. I was looking for the other night, but I think you got on a little bit late, so I couldn't let you know how proud I was to hear that. You inspired me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Make me think about telling you, you inspire me. You inspire me. <laughs> Don't you know it? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Inspiration. But again, no healing medicines. He said, all your lovers have forgotten you and they seek you not. For I, for I have wounded you with the wound of the enemy. Y'all say he's using the enemy against us, brothers and sisters, because we rebelled against him. And with a chastisement of the cruel one, and we know how cruel they can be. Don't get we got books without sanctuary, medical apartheid, you know, worse than slavery, the delectable Negro. I mean, the burning, talking about toss of Greenwood, Oklahoma. I mean, we can go on and on and on. Because I'm gonna chastise you, you gonna, with a chastise, I'm gonna chastise you with a chastisement of a cruel one for the multitude of your iniquities. Remember, we just read that in the book of, uh, I mean, in the Torah. He says your iniquities means wickedness, your rebellion, because your sins were increased. Y'all say I'm trying to pull you out, and you want to go farther in. And how do you go farther in, brothers and sisters? In rebellion, refusing chastisement. Don't no one don't want don't want anybody to say anything to you because you're gonna get your feelings hurt. But you're but you're a brother of Zion or you're strengthening Yahuwah. Blessed be Yahuwah who teaches my hands to war and my in my fingers to fight. The strength, where's your strength? If you got strength, chastisement should be something you embrace, not be offended by. Only a weakling runs when chastisement comes. A man or a woman of valor, they stand their ground. Like, yeah, that, that's appropriate. I can handle it. Who he loved, he chastised. So, yeah, I can take it. I'll make it. But what I'm not going to do is run. And I'm telling my brothers and sisters, regardless of what happened out here, whatever they do to court this way, I'm going to speak on behalf of myself. I'll take the chastisement of Yahuwah. I'll take the, right, the righteous chastisement of, you know, wise counsel around myself. We'll weigh it out. And what's right, we'll do. So I'm, I'm not above it either. None of us are. Why would I be above correction? Yes, say I love Yah. Say I'm submissive. I'm obedient. Well, if I'm submissive and I'm obedient, then that says clearly I'm definitely not above correction. Because with submissive and obedience come chastisement. It's the fruit of it. Verse 15, he said, why cry for your affliction? Y'all said, why are you crying? He said, your sorrow is incurable for the multitude of your wickedness. He said, but you keep bringing it on yourself because your sins will increase. I have done these things unto you. Y'all said, I'm letting the heathens, you know, stump us down. He said, I'm letting those heathens grind us to powder, as the old saying goes. Y'all said, it's not my will, but it's my purpose. Because we are in rebellion. We want to, we, we, we. We want to serve idolatry. We want to, to pollute the sanctuary of Yahuwah by bringing unclean things before him as a sacrifice. When he said, no, it's not clean. And you don't mix holy with unholy and clean with unclean. And you'd have to be mean-hearted to Yahuwah if to reject that. Think how bitter a person would have to be when Yah say, just don't bring me that stuff. I don't want that. And you say, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. I don't care what the elder says. I don't care what the teacher says. I don't care what the book says. I'm going to find something in the book to justify it. Speaking totally out of order. Behaving totally out of order. Why? Because you can't be corrected. That's why. And that's, you know, that's the judgment of you. If that shoe fits. That's your judgment right there. And it's going to get worse. So whatever your situation is, look around. Hmm? What's in your medicine cabinet? Look over there. He said, ain't no healing. <laughs> Yo. 
You know what 3013 says. I ain't going to say that word anymore because I can see how that's going to bring. But look around. You're going to need more and more of it after they start to cut things off after a while. They're going to be wanting to add little tubes to you after a while. They're going to bring them little machines in your house after a while. They're going to get them little oxygen tanks for you after a while. Them little oxygen tanks for you after a while. So ain't nothing about you going to get renewed. Well, I'll get renewed when I get on the other side. You ain't getting on the other side. You're a rebellion. If he ain't fixing you on this side, what make you think he's going to fix you on that side? What's, in your, what's going on right now why, you, why he ain't fixing you? He said he would. Oh, he didn't? Watch this. Therefore, all that debt, therefore, all that, therefore, all they that devile, devile you shall be devised. And everyone who harms us, y'all say, he's going to harm. And all of your adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil you shall be spoiled. And they that prey upon you, I will give for you a prey. That's called equity. That's Deuteronomy 32 and uh, 35. Vengeance is mine, said Yahuwah. Again, Deuteronomy 32 and 35. And Yah said that. So my smart says, don't worry about them who are attacking us. Let them attack. I'm not afraid you can attack me all you want. You're just attacking Yah in me. Because I'm not telling you of my own opinion. I'm giving it to you from the book. And it's not my own private interpretation. That's why I gave you precepts and give precepts. That's you want to say that. Because it makes you feel justified. And that's okay. I'm talking about you meaning them, brothers. So it's not you meaning you. You meaning them. That makes them feel justified. But again, you know, who are you fighting with? They think they're fighting with us, but they're really fighting with you. So you, you Yahoo, brothers and sisters. So y'all stay the course. Those of you who are on this path of this journey of redemption and understanding who our Savior and who our Redeemer is, stay the course. We're on the winning side of this. We're going to win. Yeah, we're going to go through troubles. There's no question about that. That's why Yahweh is going to gather us from all four corners of the earth. Because we're going to have their strength in numbers, brothers and sisters. This platform and similar platforms like Sister uh, 58, Isaiah 58, One Cry Aloud, and others. These were, you know, Brother Heyday has, has a channel. for, the, for you know, It's a Haitian speaking channel. But they, what we're here to bring it together for you. Many others too. Dumb, we talk, many we don't even know. But if they're speaking this truth, then they're speaking Yah's truth. They have no other Savior, no other Redeemer. They don't touch that New Testament anymore. Then that's Yah's fault. That's the right people. And we're here. And we're going to grow. We're multiplying. He said we would. We're always going to be outnumbered by the, by the heathens and their religious in the, in, entities. But we'll be strong enough to fight together. So when that, you know, final battle comes that Joel speaks about, we're going to be ready. We're starting off now spiritually. And eventually, we're going to be physically together. He's gathering us now spiritually, and soon we're going to be gathered together physically. I'm talking about those who are called of Yahuwah. And he's gathering everybody. So all of you, too, well, you I ain't got no way to go. I, we've already had that conversation. That rebellion, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Be careful. You, you might get what you say. Let's go back and read Proverbs 18 and 21. Life and death is based off the your spoken word. That's what you're saying, and that's why it's probably going to happen to you because you keep saying it. Where's your faith? Where's your trust? Where's your obedience? Where's your humbleness? If you're humble, you'll say, well, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this mess, but y'all going to get me out of this mess, and he'll probably use the Elder DFG and others like him to help me get out of this mess. And guess what? You'll be 100% right. Let's go on here, brothers and sisters. Getting close to the end. Only a couple of more verses and we're done. He says, but now this is the part right here. This right here, brothers and sisters. And this goes back to the beginning of this message where I was telling my brothers and sisters who are part of that three to five. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You. And others who may be dealing with other you know, types of impairment, right? Look at this here. He said, I will restore your health unto you. And I will heal you of your wounds, says Yahuwah. Because you have called, you were called an outcast saying, Saying, this is Zion whom no man cares about. Yeah, I said, that's a lie. I care about you. I'm your savior. I'm your redeemer. You are mine. Hallelujah. That's what Isaiah 40 and 31 is talking about. Those that wait upon your hood, they shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. That's what Psalm 103 is talking about. Hallelujah. 
I hope that makes you feel as good as it make me feel. I don't care what your illness is. High blood pressure, diabetes, some form of cancer or recovery, doesn't matter. Glaucoma, it doesn't matter. Vexation of the mind just means depression. They want to tell you it's, you know, some kind of mental disability. It's just vexation. It says, go read Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 and 20. It says it right there. But Yah is removing that. He said, we don't, there will be no healing, you know, MEDs, right? There's no healing MEDs. I'm your healer. I'm your redeemer. I'm your savior, says Yahuwah. So he says again, verse 17, for I will restore your health. Just like he said in Psalm 103, restore you what? Like the eagle. I'll restore your youth like the eagle. Hallelujah. And the great thing about Yah's word, Yah's word is so powerful, brothers and sisters. It's like David said, it, his, the, it, it, it flows over. Even the, the righteous stranger can benefit from this. Talking about the righteous stranger who ain't in idolatry, not in paganism, who keeps your laws, your, your who's laws, statutes, and commandments, and understand the role that they play. They, even they can benefit from it. And some will. But then many of Israel won't ask. It's interesting. Think, let me tell them, like, damn. But well, you got heathen strangers out there who will embrace this truth, and you got the, per the people who this truth was written for, and they want what the heathen strangers know they don't. The, even heathen strangers know that's no good, what they're doing. And they're like, why y'all over here when y'all got all that over here? And I'm sure you probably, you know, they, if they were being out, you say, because I'm vain. <laughs> I'm vain. I'm vain. I'm just vain. I'm full of vanity. That's why. I want a bag. <laughs> I want a zaddy. End up dismembered. Who knows what next after that. Let's go on here. It says this. Thus says you, I will bring again uh, the captivity of Jacob's tent and have mercy on his dwelling places. Hallelujah. The city shall be built upon a heap and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And it was a palace going to be a palace for us. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them shall make merry. Hallelujah. We're going to be celebrating and having a good old time, brothers and sisters. And to come. But he said, we'll have some of that right here when he brings us all together. But more importantly, you know what I'm saying? That's coming. All right? We're in Jacob's trouble. So we're going to have to, he said, we're not all, we say, we're going to, there's going to be some punishment. going to be some, tough, there's some rough days are coming ahead. But if you and your whore, brothers and sisters, he going to cover us. He going to get us through. All right. Matter of fact, I'm going to finish with that. Give me a couple of minutes. Remember that. Don't forget what I just stated. stated. He said, and their children also shall be as aforetime, mean blessed. And their assembly shall be established before me. Will be established. It's not already there. He says, it's going to be established. So all these assemblies, all these churches, genogens, all of those assemblies, they are lying. He said, my assembly has not even been reestablished yet. So what are they doing over there? What are they doing in those churches? Christ's church. What are they doing over there? He said, my assembly hasn't been established yet or reestablished yet. You're in captivity. He said, what are you doing? Oh, you're, you're, you're imitating the heathens. That's what he said they were doing. We don't have a religion. We don't have a church. We are a people. We are a nation. We're sovereign under Yahuwah. That's why we don't have assemblies. Communities, one thing. Assemblies are a totally different thing. Living and working together and praising and, and celebrating y'all's you know, purpose together, yeah. Protecting each other together, yeah. But that ain't no assembly. But these two-thirds heathens got, you know, even the ones on community, they think they're in assemblies. I say lost in the soup. Now they're over there destitute. Begging, I got the other people trying to defend them. Oh no, Brother Dial is a good man. Oh, Brother Dial is a good man. Well, he was talking all that crap about three or four, five, six months ago. Now he's running for the hills. All them little guns and stuff, he be running around there and training all this stuff. Now he look a little scared to me. Look a little yellow. I see the little yellow streak. This ain't yellow, this green. But he, I see this streak on you, but it's yellow. And all those over there defending you, y'all defending that yellow streak on him. It's it contagious. Y'all look a little bit, y'all look a little suspect. Just telling you brothers over there. 
you pastor, the Niz and the rest of y'all. You ain't looking too good to us over here. You got to defend the pastor. Let him defend himself. He's the shepherd. He can't. Because he's not Yah's man. He's y'all man. And I'm not defending them other heathens who are attacking them. I'm just bringing out the truth. Heathens attacking the heathens. Let's continue on here. It says, and all shall proceed thanksgiving and a voice that will make Mary read that are in verse 20. And their children shall be aforetime and, yeah, and their assembly shall be established before me and I will punish all that oppress them. And all of their nobles shall be of themselves. Hallelujah. That's why Deuteronomy 17 and 15 says, There should be nobody over us but an Israelite, brothers and sisters. Keep that in mind. And the Torah says it. And this is y'all saying it over here too. We shouldn't be in these churches, you know, in all these little so-called mixed congregations and all that stuff, and having these, you know, men up on these on these uh bowl on, on these bail uh platforms up there, you know, talking down to us, looking down over us. As though we're 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 we're, we're you know they are our uh, conquerors and that and that we are you know they um, I guess for lack of a better word that the colonizers are still colonizing pushing the same stuff the colonizers were pushing upon Israel that's how we end up in this situation today. With Baptists as part of what we are, are identifying as a Baptist or a Catholic or a Methodist or a Pentecostal or non-denominational or what have you. Jehovah Witness, Nation of Islam, Seventh-day Adventists, all of it. Colonizers. The African Canaanite ones too. The Islam ones too. Colonizers. No, only Israel is supposed to be over Israel. Period. And that's what it's talking about here. He said, the nobles shall be of themselves and their governors shall proceed out of the midst of them. Our leaders are supposed to come from us, not no heathens, like the New Testament talking about obey those who have rule over you because they were set up, you know, and they were telling the people to, to, to obey, you know, these wicked popes and emperors and everything else and still over there telling people to, 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 to you know to, to vote for Biden or vote for Trump the same wicked behavior I ain't voting for them I don't do no it doesn't matter the mindset was matter the fact that it's even something you even thinking about even talking about discussion that, that it even matters to you makes it matter to you we're supposed to be focused on Israel when it comes down to leadership there's always going to be a remnant. There's always going to be a one-tenth righteous among us, brothers and sisters. But nobody wants to talk about that. So I'm going to talk about it. Well, again, be, I'm, my apologies when I say nobody, but it's just sometimes my passion because I feel like Isaiah sometimes, like where, where the rest of them at? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know there are others out there, so forgive me, you know, for, you know, for my passion. You know, I do know there are others. I know I'm not alone. But there's so far few of us, so far in between, so so few of us that you, sometimes you feel all alone. But I know I'm not, and I'm happy, and I'm, I'm grateful for many of you because I know you're standing with me. You're standing up too for this truth. And I know you're not going back just like I'm not going back. Hallelujah. He said, but their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, us, and I will cause them him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me, for he is this that is engaged his heart to approach unto me, says Joel. He said, excuse me, who is this? He said, those who want the men and the daughters of Zion who love Yahuwah. Those are the ones who can inquire of him. Not those who, you know, who ignore Yah's, you know, people by not correcting them or chastising them or teaching them, encouraging them. Warning them. He said, Though you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. And behold, a whirlwind, the whirlwind, or the tornado of you who goes forth with fury, and a continuing fury, and it shall fall with pain upon the heads of the wicked. Hallelujah. In his fierce anger, Yahuwah shall not return until he have done it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days. You're going to consider it. 
And that's what he's saying. They're going to regret it. He said, are these people are not going to stop this wickedness. Y'all yeah, said until I put a tornado, uh, 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 what do you call it? An uh, earth-shaking tornado. He gave me that to me. He says, earth going to shake. Not an earthquake. I said, shake. Not quake. Sh like a shift. It's going to shift. That's the word. So it's going to shift. And everything going to start falling and tumbling down. The only place it's going to be safe is those of us who are in your hood, brothers and sisters. And that's what Isaiah said in 43. But let me read this one more time. Then we're going to go to 43. And then we're done. He said, the fierce anger of Yahuwah shall not return until he have done this. So it's coming whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, it's still coming. Whether they believe it or like it or not, it's still coming. Whether heathen, they can talk about their, their 2030 and their 2050 and all that stuff, playing they, all they want. It does not matter. They think they're Elohim anyway. That's why they can tell you, oh, you know, in, in 20 years and 30 years and 50 years. Yeah, right. That's what they think. That's how arrogant they are. That's not what Yah says. And if you're as intelligent and smart and love Yah with all your heart, soul, and strength, you will take Yah word over their word. Hallelujah. That's what I'm going to do. And he says, no, he's coming. And he says, and he's going to perform every, all the intents of his heart in the latter days. He said, and what those intents, he said, verse 20, he said, what well, a whirlwind like a tornado goes forth with fury and a continuing tornado. And no, it does not, and it shall fall with pain upon the heads of the wicked. He said, pain, P-A-I-N, pain. You're going to put pain on their asses. And any of you, Asherah, who want to be over to it, you're going to get it too. Except you repent, stop serving them other gods and those other Elohim and entities and come right back over there to Isaiah 43. Here it is. We're going to end right here. Except you do this, you're going to get the pain too. He says, Isaiah 43, but now thus says you who, who created you, O Yashorel, who he that formed you, O Yashorel. Fear not, I am. I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. See, with the same thing Jeremiah was saying. You are mine. And when you pass through the fire, I will be with you. See, that's his healing power. And when you go through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers. And, you, and the rivers shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. We got Abraham as an example. We got Daniel as an example. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. But they got other people who will tell you they were in fires and somehow another came out of those fires and nothing happened to them. Many people were in war. Everybody with them were unalived and they survived. Fire was burning everywhere and they'll tell you they walked right through that fire but they were believing you who and they saw angels take them through. House fires too. Y'all word is true brothers and sisters. But if you gonna if you reject him and you want to be an idolater and you don't want to clean out your closet and get rid of all of these idolatrous things made with the hands of men then okay you're on your own. But when the pain comes, you're not going to be spared according to Yahuwah. Don't try to put that on me. Yahuwah said, you just heard your brother read it. Go back and read it for yourself. And that's not the only place you can find that. The judgment I'm talking about of Yahuwah. The suffering that's coming. But he gonna, but some of us, he's going to miss us. Some of, some of us, we're going to be spared. Hallelujah. Some of us, we going to be spared. And I'm happy about that. I feel, you know, I don't know how I feel about the other ones. I feel some kind of way about it. But, you know, at the end of the day, choices got to be made. You choose. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Isn't that what uh, Moses told him when he came out the mountain? When our people were worshiping Baal, the gods of the Egypt, the African gods. So you better, you're going to choose right now. You're on your side over here. So I'm on your side. I'm over here. What side are you on? My host is on you on your side too. Your side. And I'll finish right here. He said, You are my witness, says Yahuwah, and my servant whom I chose. This is Isaiah 43 and 10. And believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there is no L form. Then we just not read that in uh, the book of Exodus 20 and 5. He said, There is none before me. And he said, And neither shall there be any after me. I am Yahuwah, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared. Saved, and I will show where no man, no strange, that there be no man, that there be no, that I have showed when there was no strange Elohim among you. See, I showed you my power when you didn't have them guards around you. 
So give it all those idolatry things around you so y'all can show you his power. I'll read it to you one more time. Book of Isaiah 43 and 11. I am Yahuwah, and beside me there is no Savior, none, no Lamb. I have declared and saved, and I have showed when there was no strange Elohim among you. Now you want to see his power? Get all that idolatry and all those things from around you, brothers and sisters. And stay focused, stay in the book, stay in the word, and stay with like-minded you know, brothers and sisters like ourselves. And you watch how Yah renew you. Like the eagle. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> Praise Yah. I hope that's helpful. I know there's strength there. There's food there. The question is, will you eat it? Will you be strengthened for it? Will you be healed? Because you can be. Hallelujah. But the only way, like he said, in another way, Yah is our way. All right, sisters and brothers? And that I want to say, brothers and sisters, thank you very much. And by the way, I want to, want to thank, I call out a couple of people. Brother Stark, Sister Billups, uh, Sister Maria, hallelujah, Brother Mendez, Brother Pearson, Sister Davis, you know, for your consistency, you know, in your giving. And for others who have given too, you know, but I just want to, I just want to tell you guys, thank you because like clockwork, you're there every week for your brother. It is really appreciated. All right. And uh, for all you others who are doing things to help, you know, that I, you know, to help support what we're doing here. Yeah, I will bless you too. So, all right. So when you're doing all your giving, don't forget about your brother. All right. All right, brothers and sisters. Um, I hope you have a great rest of the day, wherever you hear this message. Uh, and remember, y'all is coming. And the question is, where will you be found? All right. But if you're with the issue, if you're on the right page, you're going to be found with us. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, brothers and sisters. Until we meet again, y'all willing, uh, Yahuwah, Shalom. <laughs>